Welcome back to another episode of the Fandom Experience. I'm here with a special guest, Stacey Ike. She's a TV host, actress, entrepreneur, podcaster, human activist, leader of the community. How are you doing today? Oh, that's a beautiful <laughs> intro. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm glad you're able to come stop by today and talk to me. Yeah. Um, share insight on your experiences, your life. Um, I kind of start off my podcast asking questions. It's like a little game. It's called mm-hmm. Fam Q&A. Okay. Um, I ask questions. You just give me answers. Okay. Um, Money or relationships? Relationships are money. Okay. Uh, I had a feeling you were going to say that. Twice. No, did you? <laughs> I did, I swear. Because like, I was thinking about like relationships can equate into like money Absolutely. Later, relationships are than, currency. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Rather than, you know what I mean, like yeah. having upfront money. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hip hop, would you prefer hip hop or Afrobeat? Dang, that's kind of hard. I can't. Mm, so... Is the game that I have to prefer something? You're really lucky today because, like, normally, like, I would have, like, <laughs> you're alcohol. Like, you're, oh, really? And you would have to take a shot if you couldn't answer it. But, like, you know. <laughs> I am really lucky today. <laughs> um, um, you're lucky today, but yeah. Yeah, nah. because they, that's, like. I mean, if you had to, like. If I had to pick. One, I think. To forever if, listen to. You know why that's difficult for me? Because, one, they both represent represent a part of my experience. Mm-hmm. The hip hop experience is a part of the American experience nice. and I'm American. Right. But nice. then the Afro beats is like, I'm Nigerian yeah, too. And we can go hard yeah, on this. Like, yeah. so it's like to listen to forever. I would say Afro beats cause I'm enjoying okay. where we're going to go. Yeah. But I very much honor that they are like intertwined yeah. to a lot of people's experience, including sure. mine. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, which era do you like more the two thousands or the 2010s? The 2000s. For sure. Yeah. <laughs> is it because you were growing up as yeah. a teenager? And, and, and I was like, this man. is fun. Everything's <laughs> light. And like, jeans are cool. And yeah. Yeah, I loved it. Um, 2000s R&B or R&B now? 2000s R&B. I don't really? even know. Yeah, I just feel like. You don't like the scissors of the world? The... No, I do. I just really like yeah. how we had R&B back then. Yeah. Like it was, very, I mean, everything that's now is also born from what yeah. you could experience and see them. But yeah. it was just, man, hearts were on sleeves in yeah. the 2000s in a way that like, no, it, was. it was just like. Well, <laughs> I didn't experience are, it, but like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got older. Yeah. I went back. And I when like, you go yeah, back, like, you're like, this is. Yeah, no, nah, it was different. <laughs> really love is serious. Yeah. No, <laughs> like, for real. Yeah. Like, I just feel like it was different. Like Usher's music versus like. You know, his I mean, music is so timeless. Yeah. Like, this, how did Literally. he become timeless? Yeah. Like, you now see young people, and I say young, I'm still young, <laughs> first of all, <laughs> but j- it's cool to see like the Gen Z yeah. and millennials, like where they both go. And yeah. I was just talking to my sister about this. I'm like, the fact that like you're so obsessed with Beyonce and my 45 year old friend is so yeah. obsessed, like, Crazy. this is cool. Yeah. Like, this, these, this is who's timeless. So, yeah. well, Usher, I feel like he did the same thing. I think that's what makes artists, um, you know, I mean, super great. Like, yeah. Like Kanye. Yeah. So cool. <laughs> um, He's like, let me throw in that. I love Kanye. <laughs> um, you know, I know you you do a lot of traveling. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that was something that was, I guess, like a goal of yours. Um, so my question is London or Nigeria? That's unfair. These are unfair. Um, I, know, I feel like these are tough questions that you know. Wow. Great questions. <laughs> and don't just, don't just say Nigeria just because, you know what I mean? That's our homeland. I like, know. I know. But like. They're both at like 75% for me. (laughs) Yeah, because they both have things that you're like, oh my God, but they're also both fantastic. Mm. And I've only, wow. And I spent like three months in London. Oh, really? And that was a pretty long time for the first time. Like I hadn't ever been there before. So just to be there for the first time and be like, okay, I'm about to do three months here. I haven't gotten to spend three whole months in Nigeria. I've spent a month um, at a time, but. Yeah, that's crazy. Three months in London. Yeah, I don't know. Can I scale? Can, can I merge? Can <laughs> yeah. That was my last question. I love them both. I, I really we can, do. We can come back to that. Yeah. Um, My first question, Oprah said, you have enormous, I quote, she said, <laughs> you have an enormous potential. I'm here to help you hone in on that. Mm-hmm. Like when someone of her magnitude says that to you, like how does that, you know, um, help you and your confidence moving forward in your career? Beautiful question. Um. Yeah. I mean, it was definitely a really big moment, right? Because mm. I was her. She was saying that into response to me thanking her. So I, you know, did a show on her network. Her and I met on the red carpet a few mm. months later, I had a talk show. I did an audition for it. So there was all the in between was I already like her. I already saw the talent. Mm. There was a couple people like 
that it all went through, like my team and her team. And I didn't really know exactly what was going on until yeah. I got this call from a production company that was like, hey, she's a fan and wants to do this with you. I was That's like, crazy. what's going on? <sighs> right. And so when we, her and I finally got a chance to sit together, I was thanking her and just saying like, thank you so much for this opportunity. And she's like, I don't really just give you, I don't just give out opportunities. Yeah, yeah. Like you have to show me something. You, ha you had something and that's why we're here. And you know, I'm, and she was just like, there's so many people who are going to try and speak into your life right now or try to like ask you to do stuff, but I don't need anything from you. Mm. So when I'm doing it, I'm just here to hone you, like hone your potential. And mm. I was like, that's really major. So it definitely gave me a boost of confidence. The funny thing with confidence is like, it goes up and down, right? So mm. like, I would, I would hope that because I have gotten that validation, I would never need to like mm. be you know, confident again, like I got it, yeah. but that's not really true. Like I've definitely gone through so many ups and downs since that moment, but you just reminded me, I'm like, you're very right. That did happen to me. <laughs> and I will use that the rest of this year. Like yeah. I need to remember that, but there are definitely moments that like I, and funny enough, I'll be having a few down moments and I'll think about that. I'll be like, somebody saw something in you that you gave in the most natural state. You were just yeah. being yourself. You didn't do nothing. You didn't know what was yeah. going to happen out of that. Like what? Mm. So that to me is like, a beautiful reminder that even you just brought it up, but yeah, it was a big deal. It definitely gave me a lot of confidence. It definitely reminded, just like told me, okay, yeah, the thing that you think is not different or special or whatever, it's very, yeah, yeah, it's very unique and it's yours and you should just hone in on that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like for real, you should focus on that and stop trying to compare yourself to other people. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you graduated from the University of Missouri. Uh-huh, Mizzou. Um, how did you transition into being like, what you want to be today as far as, you know, in a journalism. Yeah. Yeah. Career. So like senior year of college, I was very scared because I was like, okay, so you went to journalism school, but you don't want to do news. What are you going to do? How are you going to get? Into so you majored in journalism. Yeah. I okay. majored in journalism, majored in broadcasting, Okay, cool, cool. did news for like, you know, most cause Mizzou is a very serious journalism school. One of the best. <clears throat> and so, shout out to them. yeah, shout out to Mizzou. Uh, and so when, yeah, when you get to senior year, you're like on the news at that point. And mm -hmm. that's when I knew I was like, okay, I like being on the news. And I had been on it before. I liked it, but I preferred the interview part of it. Mm -hmm. And I, I preferred entertainment. Mm -hmm. There were definitely, I did some political stories. I did some like, I loved human interest oh, stories. Okay, okay. Like I had to, you know, you have to really try a few different things with them, which is cool. Like okay. I like how to make us diversify. Unless somebody's like, no, I like this. This is all yeah. I want to do. I didn't really feel that way until I was like touching entertainment. I was like, okay, I know I want to do this, but what do we do? So, yeah, my senior year, my news director, Stacey Wolfel, was like, all right, there's this girl in L.A. Her name is Amy Paffrath. There's this other girl, Nichelle Turner. You should, like, look them up. They're entertainment hosts in L.A. Like, mm. apparently you want to go to L.A. I can't really help you with that, but maybe these ladies can. And I believe, like, I had really good conversations with both of those ladies. And they were, you know, they just told me about their journey. And mm. I was like, OK, this is encouraging because these are two different types of women in this field that I want to be in. I met I did do a internship in los angeles sophomore year of college mm. so i'd already like made a few connections so i was like let me try so when i graduated i was like hey mom dad like i don't want to do any news i'm gonna go figure this entertainment thing out i moved to australia first oh i didn't know that yeah so my last semester of college i was like i'm about to just like figure out how to do like a study abroad slash stay there so like i did like four months but then i didn't come back yeah so i was doing um i was like doing some entertainment stuff or they don't have like a lot of red carpets at least mm. at that time at that time like it's been 10 years so who knows but yeah i just started like doing as much anything i could in the entertainment space or like fashion or whatever like yeah. any interviews i could do film world that's that's kind of how i was like all right and then my coach was like hey you're actually talented you should move back to america and i was like you had a coach yeah i had an acting coach oh really yeah i took acting classes when i graduated i also mm. was like okay i want to act my parents were like oh, yeah yeah that's and crazy. i was like i mean it's all Telling stories comes in multiple different ways. So yeah. I was just like, I want to tell stories and I want to figure out how to do that. If I was not telling somebody else's story, how could I tell like mm -hmm. my own story? Like, you know, Where they could still connect. yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was the whole goal. So yeah, I was doing acting classes and she was like, you should move back to America. And I was like, dang it. Okay. So then I came back four months later, I moved to LA. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's actually was kind of my next question. Um, you made the decision to move to LA. Like, how is that? How did that come about? Mm -hmm. um, were you scared? How does your parents perceive it? Because, you know, us being Nigerian, um, I know my parents, like, not to say, like, they wouldn't, because I moved to L.A. when I was 19, too, mm -hmm. when I was playing basketball. Mm -hmm. um, so, like, it was kind of scary. My parents kind of just were accepting of it, like, hey, he wants to chase his dream. 
he's still doing school, so I guess it's okay. Mm -hmm. Um, so how was that experience for you? So how, what happened after you moved? What after nineteen? Uh, I was in Cal. I was in Palm Springs for mm -hmm. a year. Mm -hmm. I got hurt. Mm -hmm. I had to get surgery. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to get surgery just because. I wasn't going to be able to walk for a year. Mm. So that was kind of like the end of my basketball career. But like, Aww. no, I mean, I was mad at the time. Yeah. Of course, like, you know, I had so many emotions, you know, growing up. Yeah. You wanted to be something. And then you get to the point where, like, you have to start being serious about your life and your journey. And it, you know, kind of got cut short. But I don't regret it. I mean, I think everything happens for a reason. It kind of led me into podcasting. Yeah. And that's where I am today. In a different so, space. That's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. Um, so the actual story that led me into it was I was working at a retail store. And I was pretty good at it. I worked at a retail store that I worked at in high school. Mm -hmm. And so I went back there and I was like, hey, do you guys remember me? Like, can I get a job? Because <laughs> I had just moved back from Australia and I didn't know exactly what I was going to do. But this is when you talking about in L.A. No, no, no. I had just moved, came back from Australia. OK, OK. And so I'm probably like 22. OK. I think I'm 22. And I was like, all right, I know I'm, I'm eventually going to move to L.A., but like okay, I can't okay. move right now. I got no money. You yeah, know, I just yeah. whatever. So I got a job and I was good at the job. I was good at selling clothes. I worked at Buckle. Um, I was good at selling clothes. And one day the manager wanted to talk to me about being promoted me. He's like, hey, we want to kind of talk about your long term goals. You know, I really think you'd be a great manager here. And I immediately started crying. I was like, Real? I'm sorry. This is a. <laughs> I'm not trying to. I, I don't want to work here. Yeah. I just wanted to figure out what the <laughs> hell yeah, I was doing in my life. Yeah. Not to say like I didn't because I really respect. I, I actually really enjoyed the job, yeah, yeah. but I didn't. I needed it to be the pep for yeah, me to yeah. figure out what the next thing was yeah, going to be. Like, yeah. So I like was so dramatic. I went to Barnes and Nobles, sat in front of the like creative arts <laughs> section, saw all these like acting titles and i was like i just wanted to act and i just want to be a performer and i just want to perform yeah. like just really dramatic and i call my dad from that place and i was like mm -hmm. oh my god they're trying to promote me like what am i gonna do he was like please like come home like don't make yeah. any sudden moves yeah. so my parents were like okay so i came home and talked to them about it i was like listen i think i gotta do this la thing or i'm not gonna like be happy and mm -hmm. so they were like we will drop you at the airport. So before that, wow. what I did was I took a week off from work and I said I was going to L.A. for my birthday celebration. My hand is in air quotes because I was not. <laughs> I was going to like pre-connect with people. Yeah. So I had this contact at Yahoo. I had this contact like I can't even remember, but that was the one I do remember. I had a few contacts and I was like, I'm going to go out there and like just talk to them. Mm -hmm. Literally no idea what I was doing. Just And I've done that a lot. Wow. <laughs> but I was just like, I'm just going to go talk to them. So I did that. And one of them was like, we really like you, but you don't live here. And so mm. I moved in January. I was like, oh, no, yeah. I can't. I can't mess this up. So yeah. I picked up and left. I think that's a big thing, though, like just from hearing you like and from other like other people who probably like will listen to this, like just like chasing your dream. And like, because I feel like I'm the same way. Like right now, like I'm still a server currently at yeah. my job. Yeah. But like, I feel like there's times where like they could have like I could have went into like the manager role, mm -hmm. but, like. I'm not that's not going to satisfy me. Yeah. Like, what I'm trying to be. Yeah. And I feel like they're trying to bottle me up. Like, yeah. Not them intentionally. trying. Yeah, to Yeah, of course. Because like, you're there. Exactly, they're like, hello, like, I mean, we're trying to make sure you're yeah, okay. Like, it's like. <laughs> yeah. But like, that's not what I want to do. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I feel like you having the courage and just like the. um, Just you wanting to chase your dream and actually like actually do it. Because like imagine if, you know, what I mean, you actually just took the like position. Yeah. You wouldn't have. <laughs> Yeah, kind of where you are for now. sure. For sure. Life will give you some of those like, do you want it or do yeah. you not want it? Like moments. Yeah. And you, sometimes you're not in a position to take it. And by the grace of God, it comes back around. And sometimes you're like, I mean, I moved to L.A. with like, I think I had a hundred something dollars in my account. Yeah, like crazy. I was tripping. That's crazy. And I still am like, <laughs> I mean, I, I yeah, I don't even know how I, I genuinely am like, what? I actually want to move to L.A. too. I, I'm going to talk to you about that. Like, okay. Camera though, okay. I actually like I actually was thinking about it like lately. Like yeah. I want to move back just because I feel like the opportunities. Well, let me ask you a question. Like, do you actually feel like opportunities in terms of like creative um, you're trying to act or anything creatively are better opportunities in Houston or L.A.? It's hard for me to answer that because I think that L.A. is just set up for that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's I wouldn't even compare it to Houston. Right. Because mm -hmm. Houston isn't necessarily set up for that. Like, mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that opportunities don't happen here. They definitely do. People. I mean, I was on the plane and I saw a huge producer and I was like, what are you doing? Here? He's like, oh, shooting a movie. I'm like, That's bet. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like, maybe we figure out how you guys connect because yeah. I'm like, there, there are opportunities everywhere. But for my personal journey and where, when I had moved to Houston, that was 2014. I mean, excuse me, when I moved to L.A., yeah. Houston was very different. And so yeah. I already I had started doing a couple of acting things out here. I took 
I said not like classes, but I was meeting people on Facebook and like doing short skits with them, short like trying to figure stuff out, trying yeah. to get myself doing headshots, all of that. So for me, I was like, I'm ready. I just want to be in the place that's set up for this. Mm-hmm. So it's really like I would I would suggest if you are ready, I would get a job, mm-hmm. something remote, so you can have a job, have mm-hmm. something to just you know pay for your lifestyle, pay for mm-hmm. know how to know how to minimize as well, because that's another thing I feel like I really learned in L.A. People are always like, it's so expensive, it's so expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is, but at the same time, I don't I don't do the most. Like mm-hmm. I don't need to rent a certain type of car. I don't need to have a certain type of car. Mm-hmm. I don't have to eat out every night. Like yeah, those are yeah, stupid, yeah, you know, yeah. those are ways to like yeah. waste your money. And yeah. then you're like, it's so expensive. It's like, no, you're trying to keep up. Yeah. I was just trying to do what I need to do. Yeah. I was trying to really figure out my career. I was trying to be a creative and I knew how to like immediately minimize. I had roommates, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Like I lived with people for years before I had my own spot. And I was cool with that because I knew I was on a mission. I knew I had a purpose that I was out there for. Mm-hmm. So I, if you're craving it, if it's like, you know, you feel, I think there are, you could set some things in motion now and be yeah. like, and you know, you can start doing like, do as much as you can from here. And mm-hmm. just like, by the time you get there, you have it. Well, yeah. See, that's what I'm thinking too, is cause just cause like, I feel like, um, my, like I've been here what, in Houston for so long, but mm-hmm. I feel like I need to put myself in a position where I can actually like become a better version of me and like mm-hmm. evolve and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. actually be, uh, give me a chance to actually chase my dream of because mm-hmm. I actually want to act. Mm-hmm. I've never, I don't know if I don't really tell people that. I only mm-hmm. tell people that sometimes. Like, mm-hmm. Um, acting is like a passion of mine. Mm-hmm. Um, do you act out here? No, but I just started using TikTok as like a form a of place. like me to practice. Yeah, like, yeah. I just, you know, regardless of like the numbers that it does or anything yeah, like that, yeah. like, I just like try to use it as an acting because I've seen people who actually built acting careers off TikTok mm-hmm. and like actually end up getting opportunities in LA or, mm-hmm. you know, various places mm-hmm. just because they're being seen on social media and mm-hmm. rising. So mm-hmm. um, I just always feel like I've been, it's been like a thing with me just internally. It's just like considering like, damn, like maybe I should move, like, you know, actually make that move. Cause I already yeah. did it before. So yeah. I kind of already know like what it is yeah. and I'm now like, a little bit older. So yeah, like, exactly. You know? Exactly. And you know that there's ways to like move. You just have to be like, yeah. I'm moving intentionally. But the biggest thing for me too, out there, I feel like it's just like the people you can meet. Yeah. Like, yeah. You can, like, yeah. The relationships you can build. Yeah. Like, yeah. Like, I'm not saying F the money, but like the connections and the people who can help it's you. Real. On, like, it's real. That's why I said when you asked money over relationships, yeah. I was like, but I know I, I have witnessed relationships being money. Yeah. I have actually seen that up close and personal. And yeah. I was like, because I was very broke when I moved out. So I yeah. was like, for me to have made it for that many years, like it was like, yeah, no, that's crazy. yeah, there were a lot of different opportunities. A lot of people who had my back, a lot of people who advocated for me. I don't ugh, so much of that. I don't take lightly because I'm yeah. like, wow, like I'm so grateful. Yeah. yeah. No, that's crazy. Because you hear people talk about, yeah, I moved out with $100, but you actually really like <laughs> did it for real. So that's crazy. Um, How did you get the opportunity to work for Revolt and how was your experience working for them? Yeah. So currently, you mean like currently, with the podcast? Yeah. Um, so it's funny enough. I had a, I've had a like, a relationship with revolt after the own show um got canceled i remember getting a call from somebody at the revolt team but i don't remember who because this was years ago mm. but like i remember kind of talking to them at that time and whatever we were talking about just didn't work out but i was like oh that's cool like okay so and and then i like either got interviewed by them a few times like i was just in a relationship like yeah. i would say it was a soft relationship like we didn't keep in touch overly but i remember being connected to a few people there mm. um and I had a friend at the time her name is kiki and she would always like bring me into revolt at some time. So I remember, um, yeah, like just being cool with them. But in terms of presently, my old, um, she was my first, my assistant. And then she moved to my, um, I don't even, Oh, maybe she wasn't this role at that time, but she was my assistant for one. And she kind of came on as like just a strategic thinker, Mm -hmm. um, on different projects. And she was working at revolt at the time Mm -hmm. or a company that was working with revolt. And so they were like, Hey, we're looking for good podcast. And she put my name in the hat. She was like, have y'all checked out Human Human? Like, it's really good. Mm-hmm. They checked it out and I got an email and they were like, okay, we're trying to be in business with you. And I was like, yeah. this is so dope. So it was really a beautiful opportunity because they came to me for one. So that's just like, this is cool. The thing you're doing is working. You never know who's watching. Yeah. And, I, and it's funny because I think, I guess I should say a lot of my career has been that because even with Oprah, it's like, I, you never know who's watching. Like yeah. she had seen me online and I'm like, what that you know that thing i was doing so it's like and that thing was important to me at the time it just it just i wasn't making money doing it so i was kind of just like i was really passionate i really loved it um same thing with the podcast i was what are you referring to when you say you were i was doing this show um at after buzz tv and Mm -hmm. black hollywood live back in um it's run by uh this media host mogul 
um, Maria Menounos. So I used to work under her company and she's dope. Like she really created a place where hosts who come to L.A., they have a place to get their feet wet, mm. to try new things, to practice. And I practiced like I did a lot of shows there. I did a lot mm. of time there and um, built a reel off that being there. And I think that it definitely, you know, helped me like get my voice. Yeah. And then I started putting myself out there and other opportunities. And I was like, OK, cool. So anyway, when I she I pretty sure that Oprah had seen me. I'm not pretty sure because I'd brought her on one of those shows. Mm. So she did come on before oh, really? and I ended up doing something. Yeah, because I met her on that carpet and I was like, hey, you should come to my show. And I feel I was like, like that's, that's cool. She actually did it though. Yeah, because you know, some people just be like, yeah, it you know was I mean? very cool. In the I was moment, like, like, yeah, yeah, I'm a, yeah, I got yeah, you, I got right. you. And I was like, oh no, I followed up. <laughs> like her people yeah. were right there. I was like, yeah, remember what I said? Like it was crazy because she was literally on like a couple of days later, and I was like, yeah, that's really wild. She's real. This is wild. That's yeah, crazy. Yeah. So yeah, my anyway. So her name is Emma. Shout out to Emma. She is who referred me, and then they were like, we love, we love the show, and then all of a sudden we were talking. Yeah, yeah. So speaking of the Human Human Podcast, um, the Human Human Podcast was started because of your conversation with yourself about your fears and experiences that you thought you were only dealing with. A, what were you fearing? And B, what made you break out your shell to be vulnerable enough to even start your own podcast? What was I fearing? I just felt like I felt like my confidence was so shaky mm -hmm. and that was really getting on my nerves. I was like, what is this thing where like you're just up one day and you're down the other day? Like, what is this human thing where like you just don't feel certain? I was kind of I not to say that I had never experienced that before, but I liked feeling like certain about myself. Mm -hmm. And I felt like at that point in my life, I just didn't. And it's yeah. like that's a part of it. But what, since it's all of our first times here, you don't really know. You're like, what's yeah. going on? What's wrong with me? You're doing a lot mm -hmm. of that. Um, I was kind of beating myself up a lot. I was just questioning things. I was questioning my spirituality. Wait, at this point, is this like when you're still in LA? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So this is like 2019. Okay. Yeah, I was just, I was like questioning my spirituality. I was questioning my level of being seen. I was mm. pretty afraid. Like my job is to make other people feel seen. Yeah. So when people are like asking you stuff, like I don't really do this often. This is mm. cool and I'm a lot better at it now, but there was definitely a time I'm like, what you asking me questions for? Oh, <laughs> like, for yeah, Why? it's crazy. I don't know. You just like, you spend a lot of time learning how That's to crazy. see people yeah. and how to understand them and how to like ask them questions and how to tell their stories. Mm -hmm. But I wasn't really telling my story like that. Like I was trying. I did have people. I would bring people on my team to kind of help me do that. But I think they would even say like I wasn't always telling my story. I was yeah. figuring out a way to use my story to tell other people's story. That's crazy. So that was something that I think I was trying to like figure out. Like, I was also dealing with my like Nigerian American version of myself and like mm. what does this mean and like am I fully this or not feeling like I'm fully the, anything? Is this the part where you were like? Because I read you know I had to stalk your Instagram just to <laughs> kind of get like. You know what I mean? Like the, research. Yeah, research of on course, who you are. Of course. Like, this, this is the part where you're talking about, like, your imposter syndrome and <sighs> having that, like, I guess, being Nigerian. And then, or was it something else? I like? think I think it was a bit of that, too. Um, also, when you say, like, what started the vulnerability, I will say, because I'm also thinking of so many things that happened in 2019. Um, I just wanted to be more free with my emotions. And I felt like I was uh, a lot of, like, being a certain way in the professional space mm -hmm. is like we bottle a lot of ourselves up and mm -hmm. i was just like damn i don't feel like like i can be all of these versions of myself and that's scaring me because they very much exist mm -hmm. but i do i like hold them do i give them to certain people like yeah. what is it you know there's layers to this and i was dating somebody at the time who <laughs> said to me and i'll never forget this and i'm great grateful to him for it even though at the time i was like that's crazy he was like you ask people to open up so much but you don't open up it's crazy and i was like Oh my God, I'm embarrassed. <laughs> I was so embarrassed. He was like, That's you're crazy. not super vulnerable. And I was like, okay, let's sit with this. Damn. And so we ended up breaking up. But at the same time, I never forgot that. I was like, this person who was like dating me feels like I'm not open. I don't like that. And I need to find out what is it that I'm scared of. And most of it's perfectionism, you know, because you're like, well, I have to present perfect and I have to do perfect and I have to be perfect and all that kind of stuff. So it was a lot of that and me being like, but if you don't, if you're always so busy telling people like, don't feel like you need to be perfect, but you are still doing that. Yeah. Like this is very, this is becoming like a struggle, yeah. you know? And I just wanted to be on the other side, not even like ignore the struggle. I wanted to feel confident enough to like expose the struggle, mm -hmm. to talk about it, to experience it out loud, to mm -hmm. not hide it, to feel like this was normal. You're not crazy. Like yeah. there was a lot of times I was just like, oh, you're the one, it's only you, it's only you. 
even when we broke up, I was like, although again, like I don't necessarily think him and I were the right, right for each other, but yeah. I did very much appreciate the things that we learned from each other. And that moment I was just like, but you do want to be an open person. You yeah. do want to be vulnerable. You do want to trust yourself enough to like trust people with you. Mm -hmm. Like that's the job. And it's like the job for ourselves and the actual job. So that's when I started trying to merge both of them for real. Mm. I think that's where the podcast came. Yeah. Not I think. I know. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's crazy because, I mean, A, I mean, there's a lot to unpack after what you just said. <laughs> but, like, one of the things that I feel like is crazy is just because I feel like our job, I feel like our job, it's not hard, but, like, we're trying to get things out of people. Mm -hmm, so, like, I feel mm -hmm. like our job is the hardest because mm -hmm. the person, whenever you're just sitting there, it's like you're kind of just answering questions. Yeah, you know? yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That's so that's kind of like yeah, funny like that you, you say to like research and learn yeah, you know, and like figure out how to like. Yeah, yeah like yeah. exactly. Versus like, all right, I'm on the other side. And it's yeah, like, I just got to park. And yeah, show you know up I mean? and I'm grateful. Exactly. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I took a day you're off. Chilling, people. Like, you know, what I mean, <laughs> somebody just asking you questions. Yeah, like, yeah. So that's kind of like crazy that like, you know, what I mean, like you had, I guess I wouldn't say fear, but just like you, you trying to like just answering questions about yourself is kind of difficult for you. Yeah, so, for, sure, for um, sure. That was one thing. Another thing that too, that I feel like was funny when you brought up your um your previous relationship was, I remember like, I think you just posted like a couple weeks ago saying how this guy was trying to talk to you. I'm not going to talk about it too much. It's but it was, fine. it was just funny though. Cause he was like, you were married and you're oh trying to talk God. to me like, dude, I was, like, I was like, what's really going blown. on? Like, does I that was make like, sense? Like, what's going on? No, nah, that was like, funny. Can we, can we <laughs> stop? Like, no, nah, that was crazy. Yeah. I don't, I just, yeah. I, I don't want to spend too much time on it. Cause I mean, I just felt like it was, no, it was, it was just funny. funny. And that's, I don't want to say that. Y'all go look but, at Instagram. <laughs> yeah. No, like, cause it was just like, you know what I mean? Like, I just feel like nowadays, you know what I mean? Like, a lot more. I feel like back then it was more traditional, like, you know, husband, wife, like y'all are one. Yeah. Now I feel like nowadays, like people are getting married, but also still having different lives, you yeah. know, which is yeah. outrageous. I'm really hoping to never experience. This. Yeah, no, that's crazy. <laughs> me either, me either. Um, also too, um, I also feel like another thing, um, I also feel like you by you starting your podcast too, like being able to connect with other human beings mm -hmm. is just like an art. Like, cause at the end of the day, that's kind of why, like the reason why I started my podcast too, is because everybody has a story like my mom and dad have stories but they just might not be as appealing mm -hmm. to the to the universe mm -hmm. or the masses mm -hmm. just because they're not wearing chains they're not having all this jewelry but at the yeah. end of the day like yeah. everybody has a story like yeah. regardless of anybody like and that's what like made me even kind of start my podcast was just like i want to be able to connect with people that aren't the biggest people obviously i want to get to a point where like i'm able to talk to oprah and mm -hmm. you know I me mean? for you like kelly Rowland mm -hmm. and morris chestnut and I've heard that other guy's name, but just people of that magnitude, like, obviously, I want to get a chance to get there. Mm -hmm. But also, when I'm at this level where I'm at now, like, there's still people's stories that absolutely, can be told. You absolutely, know? And, absolutely. Um, I feel like your podcast is a great podcast. Like, the, like even the name, like, Human to Human, because it's just like, we're all human. Like, yeah, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. so we should all be able to connect, talk yeah, to each other. Like, yeah, that's I appreciate how I feel. that so much. Thank you. Um, damn, what was my question? Oh, yeah. Um, there's challenges. What are challenges that you have encountered since getting into Hollywood and being in the position that you are in, have you faced? Um, I think because media changes so much mm -hmm. that I spent a lot of time, which now in retrospect, I'm grateful for, and it's going to keep happening, but it's something I'm aware of and I'm, I stay grateful for. You don't always know exactly what you want, mm -hmm. but the more you can learn and figure out what you don't want, the closer you are to what you want. So I had to like, I well, remember sorry, getting, you say one more time? yeah, you don't always know what you want. You won't always know what you want. You won't always know what exists out there, but the more you can navigate and be confident enough to be like, okay, I don't want this. I don't want this. Yep. I don't want that. You are getting closer to mm -hmm. what you want. And I feel like that's been a lot of my journey because I remember getting offered a reality show like two years into moving into LA and to LA. And at the time I was broke. And so I'm like, this would be great money. Mm -hmm. And this would be a dope opportunity it would get me out there. But I was not comfortable doing reality TV at that time. I was a very mm -hmm. different person. I also was like, I do not want y'all to like, I don't even, I wasn't even really into reality TV. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, how, how is this going to work? And like, is this going to get messy and blah, blah. And like, mm -hmm. I know I'm a big personality. Are y'all going to spin everything? Whatever. So I remember mm -hmm. I was really like going back and forth about it. And it's so funny. I'm thinking about who was in my world at that time and who I asked their advice but I basically ended up not signing it. And I'm, I never, I remember like two days later, I got a job from YouTube and Sephora. They had reached out and was like, hey, like, we'd love for you to do this. I don't even think, I don't know if I auditioned or not, but I like, they basically were like, hey, come do this thing. Like, this is a dope opportunity. And it was like two days after me being like, what am I doing? Mm -hmm. Oh my God, I just walked away from something, blah, blah, blah. And that, I just never forgot how quick that happened. Cause I'm like, yeah, just keep doing, like, keep, 
trying to say no to the things that aren't really for you. Mm -hmm. So the things that are for you can find you, Mm -hmm. you know, so that like constantly believing that constantly finding that that has been a challenge, a great one, Mm -hmm. but a challenge nonetheless. Um, A challenge is also like knowing, man, you're just, I mean, I would say I never blame or say, you know, having a team makes your whole life. It, It doesn't, but having a team can be really wonderful, especially if the team is right for you. Right. So always learning how to navigate that has been like just a learning lesson, right? Like I, you know, I've fired some talent, some talent, I mean, excuse me, some, some, some managers I've, Mm. you know, left some, some have left me. Like that was always a really interesting experience because you always feel like it's personal, but it's like, it's really not, but it feels like it at the time. And sometimes Mm. it is, sometimes like, we're just not the right fit and that's cool too. So constantly navigating relationships, man, like, navigating your worth there are mm. moments that i was like okay i'll take whatever because i'm at this level yeah right and then there's other moments where i'm like okay wait i've done this now i'm not going to take whatever yeah. and then sometimes the opportunities don't come or they're not they don't have the budget or whatever and you're like yeah. you're just navigating a lot of personal growth and a lot of personal like what's the word like a i don't want to say personal worth because it's mm. definitely not in the jobs but it is like You're having to navigate what feels right for me, Mm -hmm. but you have, you don't really know until you're in an experience. Sometimes, you know, sometimes you're like, no, this doesn't feel right. And I got it. But sometimes you're like, oh, I didn't even know this existed. Like, I did not know the Oprah, the show I did. It did not exist. (laughs) Like they made it up when they met me. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, I didn't even know that was a potential. Like, I mean, I was already doing live Mm -hmm. talk shows. And so to then do it for real on that level, I'm like, this is, this was made for me. Right. So just navigating you know the different things that come with trying to be trying to use your creativity as a real as your life Mm -hmm. like figuring out ways Mm -hmm. to separate from it as well knowing moments that it's like okay this your your body your whole body is in it your emotions are in like too much like when a pitch gets turned down or when somebody's like i don't like your idea and i'm like oh this idea that i've been thinking of you know what i'm saying because like if you're a creative you're think this is like our lives it feels like it can be like that and i've had to really learn to balance that recognize like that's why i come home often and i'm like whoa stay balanced like Mm. calm down this is just a part of the journey it's not the whole journey relax so just those are multiple moments of i don't know if it's wellness or human this is a human Mm. experience like Mm -hmm. that's why i love it so much because i'm like wow there's a lot to figure out (laughs) like there's just so many little things that nobody really talks about. And then, you know, when it's funny, somebody gets on a stage and they make it and they say like, yeah, you just got to follow your heart, follow your dreams. I'm like, so cliche. No, <laughs> like not yeah. to say that it's not 1000% also true, yeah, for sure. but there are a lot of nuances. You got to know exactly what friends to call when certain mm-hmm. situations happen. You got to be honest with yourself about that too, because whoever friends, family, whatever, because mm-hmm. that support system, they help you navigate some of these things as well. Like mm-hmm. I'm so grateful to have a support system that I feel like they really give me solid advice. They also Mm. tell me the truth. They also let me know when it's like, Oh, that's your decision. Sometimes I'll call somebody and I'll I'll really need their opinion. They'll be like, I think this is your choice. And I'll be like, what? That is not what I needed. But that is a moment for me to like step up and be like, what is good for For me? me. You know what I'm saying? To really figure that out. So those are like the type of challenges. I feel like these very intimate things about trying to put yourself out there as a job. Those have been the things I've navigated. Yeah, no, I feel like you do have a great support system. And it's funny because I feel like Davis has said that to me before. Like, I probably asked him for something and he's like, that's like a decision. Like, he'll give me advice, but it's just like something that you got to figure out. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. A, another question I have for you, too. Um, if there, if you can go back to like your younger self, like, what would you tell yourself? Mm-hmm. Not to say that you're super old, just like, you no. know, what I'm you're younger, you're younger self. Yeah. <laughs> um, for right now. Especially seeing like how far you came, but obviously you don't, obviously like as you're moving through life, you don't know what journeys that you're going to encounter. So like now knowing what you know now is kind of like, what would you tell you? I would tell her that it always works out. Mm -hmm. That's what I would tell her because I do think that I worry sometimes I have, you know, I do too. Yeah. And I hate that. It really hurts my feelings that I still worry about stuff. Like knowing that things work out, knowing that I've experienced that many times. And I'm like, all right, like I'm, I'm in the process of trying to calm my nervous system down and really like unlearn things that are just not healthy for me anymore that I don't need to hold on to. I'm like, it does work out. And I know it might not be in the timeline you want. That's another thing. Like Mm. letting go some of I'm, I'm, I'm always trying to learn and navigate expectations for myself, for other people, for my work, for life. Mm. 
and balance it with like gratitude and that I have a chance and that I'm here and that I'm healthy. Like mm. these things help me be like, okay, so just because it didn't happen right now doesn't mean it's not happening. Mm. And that's such a constant thing I'm like talking to myself about. And I would just want her to know, like, it does work out. It will work out. It's already yeah. actually working out right now, whether yeah. you can like fully understand it or not, so, because yeah. the thank God there's a God. <laughs> like, yeah. it's not just me having a fear on it. It's not really, it's not really you girl. So yeah. you don't have to like do that. So as I'm talking to you, I'm going to remind myself of this later because yeah, I think so many times you're like, is it going to work out? Yeah. And you just really don't know. Yeah. And like, and then the, the crazy thing is sometimes it don't work out. Yeah. And that sucked too. You'd be like, but just because it didn't work out, it also still worked out. Yeah, because like, why not be for you? Rejection is protection. They've said it so many times. Yeah. Some of these cliches are real. They're very, very actually not some. I'm I'm a big believer that a lot of cliches are real because people have been on this life, this planet for multiple, mm -hmm. multiple, multiple years. So if somebody said it in 1970, it still matters, like yeah, because they went real. through the human experience. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. If somebody says in the 1600, it still matters, mm -hmm. like. So I would just let her know that it is it is going to work out. Yeah. yeah. There's this thing um, I want to bring up that you said I felt like was cool. Um, hold on, I'm sorry. No, you're good. Because you basically were basically just saying how, like, the things that people don't see mm -hmm. are, like, the things that people, I can't find the post right now, mm -hmm. but the things that people don't see, but you're still, like, grateful that, like, you've, that, that you can be like happy for yeah. like just like day-to-day -day things like yeah. even like waking up or just yeah. like the fact that you set a goal and you did it like even though you don't have everything put together i feel like some of the things that because i feel like davis davis for sure has told me that like probably like two years ago mm. i was telling him how i was just like i was reading a lot of money books mm. and at the time it was just like um i was consuming a lot of things about money and just like learning about money and like kept telling myself like you know i'm a i'm a man i need to be a breadwinner mm -hmm. like just a lot of things mm -hmm. and he basically was just telling me like you know what i'm saying like everything will work out but like you know what i mean just go through like the journey of life because i wasn't even happy about like the simple things that i guess like i was yeah. accomplishing like you know yeah. just getting my own studio saying i wanted to start a podcast and actually and started it. it like i felt like you know what i mean i understood where he was coming from but like how do you feel about just like appreciating the little things in life that like people might overlook I feel like it is a daily thing that mm -hmm. you have to be very, because my guy, like, it's so real that you said that because even today I was, I had like sent an email mm -hmm. and I'm like, hey, Stace, that's a big deal. I know it feels like nothing because in my head, like, I was like, okay, come on, girl, you need yeah. like, that is like, it took you so, because it took me a minute to send that email. And first of all, emailing is just like, sometimes it's a lot. I'm like, damn, I got to get all my thousands of email. Can we text? Yeah. Um, but <laughs> I was, the email was cause I had to make a certain decision and like yeah. every, some things have a ripple effect. Right. So it's like, I have to go to the grocery store, but also have to have the time and the time I need to have the money. And then also what am I going to eat? Like a plant, like things have like, even the simplest things mm -hmm. have like other things that, you know, are involved in that. And yeah. so we should be more proud of ourselves when we do the little things because the little things are a lot. Yeah. There are a lot of little details. There's so many little things that it, it that take up space in life. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, try to keep the, the main idea, the main idea, but like, don't discount the little things that you're doing. Don't say, because this big goal is the only goal, but yeah. there's a lot of steps to make a like to make a podcast. Like you don't just, you have to sit and research me. Mm. You had to book the time. You have to mm. check in with me. Like, just think about if it's Monday morning, you're like, all right, I want a guest on Friday. Mm. And the st you don't just get the guest. Yeah, you no, have yeah. a lot of steps to take. Yeah. I have, ex I have extreme <laughs> experience in this. And yeah. so I'm like, I know what it takes to get somebody to sit down in front yeah. of you. And so it's like, if you just booked it, that's enough. Then the second day you research and then the third day you text in and check in, like mm -hmm. whatever, you know what I'm saying? Those are all really big things that lead to the big thing. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying it and I'm also talking to myself because I have a hard time doing this consistently. I haven't gotten to that point like, yet. Yeah, like just oh, staying, appreciating, like, the appreciating the little thing oh, yeah, all the too, time. Too, like I have, sure. yeah, I'll have like a month of doing it. Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to make for it, sure. and you know, we're human, so. Mm -hmm it's not a moment to be like, Oh my God, we need to beat ourselves up about it. But I recognize it. And I'm like, just trying to be better at that and be yeah. like, no, that was okay. If this is all you can do today. I'm also the thing with that as well is like discipline mixed with gratitude is some, is like an interesting combination because mm -hmm. it does take discipline to do things well, to do things right, to, to mm -hmm. execute something, all that. So there are moments where you're like, okay, yeah, you sent that email, but you actually have four more to send and you got to do it today. So yeah. like, but you just got to be loving about it. Like yeah. we don't have to just be so, 
robot. Harden like, ourselves yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. Just be real that like, okay, you know, if we got to get a little snack, you got to whatever, whatever. Yeah. You're allowed to like feel good through the stuff. Yeah. It doesn't have to be this hard, painful yeah. uh, journey. No, it does yeah. not have to do that. No, I feel, I feel like, I feel the same way. Um, I feel like there's times where I personally too, just like, I'm always looking at the end goal and I think maybe like, you know, it's not always good to like look at the end goal. Yeah. So I might like, that's where I feel like that's where it causes people not to like appreciate the little stuff yeah. you are taking to get where you're trying to yeah. go. It's just yeah, because yeah. you're just looking so far away. And on top of that, like, you know, we live in a ge generation where social media is just so prominent that like you might wake up and all you're seeing is people where you want to be. Yeah. And then it's like, damn, like you think like, damn, what am I like? What am I doing? What am yeah. I not doing? Yeah. Am I yeah. on the right path to yeah. getting where I need to go? Yeah. Like, but I also feel like, you know, that just comes with like having faith in yourself yeah. and in God that like, you know, everything that you have going on will get eventually you'll get to where you need to go. Yeah. If you just stay the course mm -hmm. and stay disciplined mm -hmm. and, you know, mm -hmm. do like you said, um, lead with gratitude. Yeah. Um, my last question to you is like, what's next up for you? Um, obviously, you have, you've accomplished a lot of things in your life um, as of now. But I know there's probably more things that you do want to accomplish. So like, what would you say is like next for you in your life? I think you're the first person I'm going to like tell the real to on a podcast <laughs> because I really want to act like I haven't yeah. really put my I put my feet in it when I first moved to LA mm -hmm. because I was I'm well I was always passionate about it and I was always passionate about telling stories but I was trying to balance being a host and actress and I just couldn't at the time I was like I think you should run with this because like mm -hmm. I don't even though I totally believe you can do both at the time I just couldn't do it I was yeah. like I don't, I don't really know how to balance this I remember there was one day that I was getting um I, I got booked to do a red carpet, no money, paid, uh, you know, not paid. And then I had acting class that day. And the way I was like, I'm absolutely going to this red carpet. Yeah, <laughs> I was sure. like, wait, for sure. should I always choose the red carpet? <laughs> like, I don't know, but I always did. And I was like, all right, yeah. let me just lean in and see where this takes me. And I very much enjoyed, I feel like doing hosting for me first really opened me up to be a better actress. Cause again, mm. like I wouldn't have found my vulnerability unless I went through this path. I wouldn't have found the parts of myself that like, even though nobody was clapping for it i recognized i could clap for myself mm -hmm. or like i that was and that's enough like i wouldn't have gotten to those things without hosting without telling other people's yeah. stories so i feel excited to now try and i am definitely going to like put myself out there more in that way i'm trying i'm actually thinking through it right now because i'm like okay how like is it headshots again like are, yeah. what are we doing like it's kind of i'm feeling like go back to the basics yeah. of it because i've always really respected the acting field and actors in general so I always was like, if I'm not ready, I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. But that's one of those things where it's like, that's Can you just ever be ending. really ready, though. Thank you. That's <laughs> one of those things where it's like, what are we talking about? Yeah. Like, are we just talking about what, do, what does that mean? Like, yeah. you're just it's you're a human doing yeah. human things. And yeah. like acting is telling human stories. So it's like, this is cool. You're actually perfectly ready right now. You're always ready because yeah. I mean, yes, there are technical things, but mm -hmm. at the end of the day, start practicing. So I do really want to start practicing um, at the same time because I do feel really so so happy doing my podcast i you know we're gonna keep that going but i feel really proud of it because it's like my thing it's a thing that like i'm developing and pouring mm -hmm. into so much that mm -hmm. i'm like okay this is this is your baby right now and this yeah. is the thing you're gonna kind of work dream. towards and it's really beautiful so i think just having confidence in that while expanding myself more is what will be next well ah that's a great answer um Good luck on your acting journey. Thank you. Um, Good luck on yours. No, yeah. Hopefully. I haven't, I haven't started yet. I feel like you're way more ahead of me than I am. How? 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 Just because, I mean, like, you're, like, you can start, like, literally next month when you go back to L.A. And, like, you know, eventually, like, you already have your feet wet. Like, I have to, like, you know, do a little bit more work, which is fine. I'm about know? to leave you. You need to go get on L.A. casting. Do you know what that is? <laughs> no, I don't. Okay, yeah. We gonna talk. Because yeah. I'm like, I'm <laughs> you need to get fo you have all these friends with cameras. You need to get one of them to yeah. do headshots. You need three different personalities. Pick three different personalities. Mm -hmm. Then you need to you don't need to. You could just take this advice if you want. Um no, I am. <laughs> you you should get some headshots. You should sign up for two or three different like castings websites. Mm -hmm. Then start submitting yourself. Do that for six months. If you just like just that's just like step one and two. Mm -hmm. Get some new headshots, start submitting yourself, take classes. That's all I want you to focus on for the next three, six months. Then you're, then yeah. you're, it looks like you're acting. Like, yeah. that's it, right? Like, get yeah. some headshots so you can submit yourself so they can see what you look like. Have a version of you looking like this. Have a version of you, like, whatever characters you want to play or feel passionate about. Mm. Get three headshots. Get on these websites. Mm -hmm. Find an acting class. That's Not what yet. you got to do. I'm listening. Let's start. I'm taking notes. That's so it. So I got you. So we Let me ask both you. be, yeah. Oh, well, I'll listen again, but um, headshots. Headshots. Well, Headshots, 
Um, Sign up for I'm going to tell you the exact websites when we like get offline because I know LA casting is one, but I want to look on my phone to see if I have any other ones. I'll write it on my phone. This yeah. is like, sorry. But <laughs> anyways, yeah. um, no, I just want to say thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Um, you're a big inspiration for many people. Um, I've taken motivation from you just because mm -hmm. like literally like where you've gone, your story. Um, I think your story is a great story. Um, people can learn a lot from, you know, where you are, where you've been, where you're trying to go. So. I just appreciate you for coming on. Thank you so much for the no, thoughtful no questions, Daniel. I really appreciate it. And for like really just, you know, upping yourself by presenting us such a beautiful space and mm -hmm. to be open. Cause I'm like, okay, I can feel, I feel very comfortable. I feel very confident in what you're asking. It's funny as you said that too. Cause you, there's somewhere where I read where like you were trying to create a space too for like, yeah, like you so know, I'm, be vulnerable. Cause yeah. there's times where people come on and they don't feel as like safe, relaxed and safe yes. to like give like the real, real. One you know thousand, I, mean? one I don't thousand. want political answers. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Nah, but nah, yeah. I appreciate you. Yeah, though. appreciate you. Y'all subscribe, y'all comment, y'all like, y'all subscribe, run up these videos, run up these likes. This is a great interview for anybody who has any aspirations of anything, whether any goals, anything you have going on, just, you know, tune into this video.